There's a problem. I haven't filmed out here at the steer pasture much lately, and as you can see, not much has changed. This guy. <laughs> this pipe feels like it wants to break, not cut. Yep, how did I know? But it's a pretty clean break, so we'll manage. There we go. Good as new. I should be about done fixing sprinklers for the year over here, and that's not because the steers aren't going to break them anymore, but pretty soon we won't need to irrigate. So there's, I don't really see a lot of sense in keeping up on fixing sprinklers out here all winter. I just prefer to kind of come back in the springtime before we're going to start watering and then just fix everything that's been broken over winter. There is still a lot of feed out here. I'm hopeful that I don't have to start feeding these guys hay until maybe sometime in December. That would be, that would be good. I think that's it for sprinklers. Let's see if we can find these steers. I feel like they're down here somewhere. I think I see one. And if I see one, I assume that they're all there. There's the boys. One, two, three, four, five. Should be two more of you somewhere. There's six. Should be one more of you somewhere. He must be back in the brush somewhere. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, six, seven. To look at this group of steers, it's kind of like not much is going on, but I'll sort of give you some insight into just by the fact of them standing here doing nothing, they're actually telling me a lot. It's about 10 o'clock right now, so we'll call it mid-morning, and they are not out grazing. They're all just lounging here in the shade, just relaxing, taking it easy. What that tells me is that they're getting plenty to eat. If they were hungry, they'd be out looking for food right now, but they're not doing that at all. You'll also notice that all of the steers are together. There's not one way off by itself, which usually indicates a problem. They're all sticking tight together as you would expect them to do. So that tells me that nobody is lame or feeling bad or, you know, sick in any other kind of way. So what I'm saying is even when the steers are doing nothing, they're still telling you something. We've had a few little storms here in the recent past and I can see that the winter grasses are starting to wake up out here. In fact, here's, here's a good example of that. You can pretty clearly see this defined line where the grass is really tall and then just here to the right, it's very short, but it is green. So the tall grass is what receives summer irrigation. This is sort of the leftover warm season grasses that have headed out and the steers will probably eat these down eventually, but I doubt they'll be in any hurry to do so. And then outside of that, you see that the grass is starting to pop out of the ground here. It's not very tall or anything like that, but it is waking up. I've been considering taking two of these steers back home for the winter, because I think if I do that, then bringing one round bale out here would last the remaining five steers for a full week. So I'm not having to make multiple trips during the week to bring these guys hay. But I think we're still a fair ways out from feeding hay and there's still a lot of leftover summer feed here and a lot of good stuff too. I'm seeing a lot of clover, which is gonna be their primary protein source. And I mean, they've got pr plenty of roughage out here to sort of fill in the rest of the gaps. So I think we're still good here for a little while, but changes will be coming. Everything looks good here. So I think we can move on to the next thing today. It is approaching the time of year where I just have more things to do than hours in the day. So today we're just gonna start checking things off the list best we can.
It's definitely getting a little bit quieter around here since weaning a couple days ago. Now pretty much all the bawling that you hear is just, you know, cows are upset that they don't have a new bale yet. We'll take care of that in a minute, girls. Just have some patience. And I guess I haven't really explained what the plan for today is. After I get done taking care of all the cows over here at the ranch, I'm gonna load up the Blue New Holland, take it over to the hay field. Actually, before I can take it over there, I gotta run back home with it, hook up the harrows, then bring it back to the trailer, take it over to the hay field, drop the harrows off, and if things go the way that they're supposed to go, my fertilizer will be at the hay field and I don't know that I'll have time to actually start putting the fertilizer out, but the reason why I grabbed the four-wheeler is because I wanna put all my bag rows out, and then if I do have time, then we'll start spreading some fertilizer today. How's things going around here? Hmm? Your ear tag needs to be fixed here, buddy. Can I get that for you? There you go. You guys seem upset about something too. You telling me you already cleaned this hay up? You already cleaned up as much as you can reach. The weaned calves have been eaten a little bit more than I expected them to, which is fine. But I think because of this, that I'm gonna give them access to the back pasture. There is still some grass out there and I'm not letting the cows leave the front field because if they do that, then they'll be in the middle field where the only thing separating them from the weaned calves will be a barbed wire fence. And I, at this stage, I don't think that's enough. If I had a hot wire up, I would feel fine doing it, but I don't have one up right now. And it's just easier to leave them in the front field than it is to do that. So I think we'll open the gate down here. I doubt the calves will even realize this gate is open for, I mean, maybe not until tomorrow, especially since I just fluffed their hay up a little bit, but we'll open this right now. And then I think eventually they will find it. You can see there's still a little bit of grass out here. It's not a ton, but you know, for weaned calves, calves at their age, this will, this should last them for quite a while. Some oil. I'll leave that gate open to the back pasture for, I mean, basically until it starts getting muddy. There's really no reason to keep them out of there. If there's something they can find to chew on, then more power to them. Of course, we'll still be keeping the hay feeders full, but this will give them some options. Gates open down there, guys, if you're interested. Looks like you're interested in something else right now. Well, timing worked out perfectly. Bull's water is full, so we can turn that off. Okay, all the bulls, calves are taken care of last Last group that we gotta worry about is the cows here. I am not rolling the round bales out in the pasture for them at the moment. That is the way that I prefer to do things because I, I think that's just a better way to feed them. It's easier access for everybody to get in there and eat with like a three-way hay with oats and ryegrass and that sort of thing. You get some good planting action out there when you do that. So like wherever you feed bales, that stuff will start sprouting in the springtime. I haven't really noticed that with the triticale because it's kind of slow to get going anyway. So I'm not really too worried about doing it for that reason. But the reason that I'm feeding them in the corral, I'm just dropping a bale and letting them have at it, is because I can't lock them out of the pasture to give myself an opportunity to roll the bale out. And what happens is as soon as you drop the bale, the cows just swarm it and it's impossible for me to get in there and unroll it. That's why we're doing it this way. Once the weaning process has really been allowed to be complete and I'm not so worried about cows and calves trying to cross fences to get back together, then I will give them the middle field back and then I can unroll the bales like I had been before. 
but until that time comes we just got to do it this way and if you're wondering why not just drop the bale here in the feeder the reason for that is that we've got i think 19 slots here and there are 37 cows in the pen so i feel like personally that's just asking for trouble because they are going to be fighting each other so hard to get in and out of here and inevitably what will happen is the less dominant cows are going to not get enough to eat yes they will still fight each other when i drop the bale out in the middle of the krill but it is easier for everybody to get in there and get some of it than it is when it's here in a feeder and i've also learned that it's very smart to just shoo them all out of the corral drop the bale unwrap it and then open the gate back up and let them in here rather than trying to do all of that while they are just piling on top of that bale trying to eat it it's uh it's dangerous actually for me to be trying to unwrap the net off of that when all that's going on so we're gonna grab the flag and get them out of here and then we can set this bale up for them see that i haven't even pushed on them and they're starting to walk out of here already i think they know the deal Last second plan change. As I was bringing this bale out and setting it down, I, I don't know why I have not thought of this before, but I can just unroll the bale in the corral. That makes so much more sense. I probably don't have enough room to unroll it all the way, but if I've got a little bit of a core down there at the end, cows will rip that apart, they won't care. So tomorrow, if I'm really smart, I'll set that bale down on top of the hill and roll it down the hill. I wish I would have done that this time. That's as far as I'm gonna go with it because I don't want it getting real close to that fence. That would be a recipe for that fence getting broken. So we'll leave it back here they want to mess around or whatever, they won't be running into anything. This is what cracks me up about weaning calves. On the first day that you separate them, the calves don't care, the mothers are very upset. And then about the last day of bawling, it's mostly the calves that are upset and the mothers now don't really care. I'm gonna say rolling the bale out like this is definitely the way to go. Everybody's got access to hay, nobody is fighting. That's not the case when I just drop the bale and walk away from it. Okay, moving on. Still got a lot to do today. I'm off to get Harrow's. goes without saying that usually I don't have the four-wheeler on the front so I can pull the tractor up a little bit more and get that weight kind of right where I want it. I'm a little worried. I've got too much weight on the rear end of the trailer, but we're not going very far. We're not going very fast. So we'll just, uh, once I pull off of the, the hill here, we'll see what it looks like. Certainly looking a little rear end heavy, so we'll, we'll take her easy. 
Well, we made it over here and good news, fertilizer and seed is here ready to go. So now everything's up to me. I'm not waiting on anybody else to do anything, which I guess is good. Getting a little cramped here. The next thing that I'll need to do with the harrows is to cover the seed. So when I do that, I hook the ring roller up to it and then the harrows kind of fluff the ground and put dirt on top of the seed. And then the ring roller will just kind of like, I don't want to say pack the ground, but it'll firm things up and just, you know, one more pass with the ring roller makes things a little bit smoother as well. So. I'm gonna just go ahead and hook the ring roller up right now so I can get it out of the field. But then when I am ready to cover seed, it'll be hooked up and ready to go. Looks like good a spot as any. Well, it seems less and less likely that I'm gonna have time to hook up to the spreader and actually start spreading fertilizer today. But I, I, at the very least, my main goal for today is just to get these bags set up. This always takes longer than I think it's going to. So if I can just get that done today, then this is just ready to go for me. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't watched any of my hay planting videos in the past, then you might wonder what our bag rows for. And basically what they are is I'll set up three bags that are perfectly in line with each other that go down the distance of the field. And then when I'm making my fertilizer and seed application, I can follow the bags and make sure that I'm getting straight lines and not overlapping. This enables me to get a fairly precise application without having the expense of a GPS system. Hey, you're not even gonna run for a little while? Did you want to run or you want to ride on that thing? Ready? got to do that two more times but the next two rows are going to be a lot longer because the, the field gets much wider as we go down towards the levee. we've got three rows of bags going across the field and of the bags in those three rows three of them will line up going down long ways while I'm driving up and down the field as long as I keep those bags in line with each other then I know that I'm going straight and I also know that I'm not severely overlapping or underlapping my last pass if that still doesn't make any sense then just think of the bags as reference points and that way while I'm out there driving with really nothing to gauge where I'm at. Now I've got the bags and that's what they're for. Something I get asked a lot is what kind of hay is it that I plant? And this year I'm actually doing two different types. Half of the field is gonna be triticale. That's gonna be this uh, slightly larger half. And the reason for that is that I've got a problem with wild oats in this field. And if I plant triticale, then it allows me to use some fancy herbicides that will help me spray out that wild oat problem and get rid of it. This other stack of seed here, this is called three way or three grain. And what it is, is oats, barley, and wheat and I'll be putting this on the smaller half of the field because I think I've pretty well got my grass weed issues cleared up over there. I've got some broadleaf problems, but with the three-way planted, I can still take care of broadleaf. 
This is a different variety of triticale than what I planted last year, so be interesting to see how this stuff does. Sometimes at the end of the day, I just look back and it's like, where did the day go? And uh, this one kind of feels like it got away from me, but I've got all my bags out and that is something that in my mind, I feel like it shouldn't take that long, like 30 minutes tops, but it always takes a lot longer than that. And you know, I do have to do a lot of walking in order to do this. And it, I don't know, it's just one of those things. Every year when I do this, I think, man, I really need to think about getting a GPS. But you know, this is kind of like today, I think that, and then whenever I spray the field, I'll think it again, but I won't really think that for the rest of the year. Anyway. The bags are out. Everything is here, ready to go. This is just a matter of me getting to it and it's probably gonna be what the next video is about. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.